many years ago, while I was waiting for a flight at Mumbai International Airport, I happened to meet an Indian Army officer. He was a colonel and a pleasant guy to talk to. As we were there together for more than three hours, we talked about almost everything under the sun. During our conversation, at one point, he requested my permission to ask me a personal question. I said he could ask me about anything. Even then, with some hesitation, he asked me, Father, why did you become a priest? Then I said, because I was called by the Lord Jesus to be a priest. He seemed to be satisfied with my answer. And so he kept quiet for a few moments. And then he asked me, but Father, how did you know Jesus called you? I said, through faith. Yes, it was through my faith that I knew that I was called by the Lord Jesus to be a priest. No angel appeared to me. There was no vision from the Lord. But in my heart of heart, I knew that Jesus was calling me. And because of my faith in the Lord Jesus, I knew the Lord was calling me. Now, this faith is not anything special to me. This is special to all of us who are believers in Christ. We Christians are a people of faith. In fact, as St. Paul reminds us, in his second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 5, verse 7, we walk by faith, not by sight. As I said before, we are a people of faith. But how strong is our faith? How deep is our faith? It seems our faith is almost like the faith of the disciples of Jesus. After Pentecost, when Peter began to preach the good news of Jesus, he was arrested and put into jail by King Herod. Earlier, Apostle James had been arrested and put to death by Herod. And so, when Peter was arrested, all the disciples of Jesus got really frightened. They gathered together in the home of John Mark and they began to pray earnestly for the release of Peter. While they were praying for the release of Peter, there was a knock at the door. A girl named Rhoda went to answer the doorbell. As soon as she reached the door, she heard the voice of Peter speaking from outside. Instead of opening the door for Peter, she rushed back to the group and said, Peter is here, Peter is here. Then do you know what the people in the group said? They said, you must be out of your mind. What that means is, they were not willing to believe that Peter was released from prison. But Rhoda insisted that Peter was there. Then they said it may be his angel. All this happened in the context of their prayer. Their prayer for Peter. Even though they prayed with earnestness and enthusiasm in their heart, they did not have deep faith. It seems very often our faith is also like that. We believe in our Lord Jesus Christ. We acknowledge him as our Lord and Savior. But in our daily life, we have very little faith. Otherwise, as Jesus said, 
we would have done wonders in our life. Jesus once said, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you will tell this mountain move from here to there and it would move and nothing would be impossible for you. If a small, if a little faith can move mountains, then if we have strong faith, imagine the things our faith can do in our daily life. Now let me come back to my question, my previous question. Do we have strong faith? Do we have deep faith? If we do not have strong and deep faith, why is it so? Well, it seems we do not have deep and strong faith because we do not have the perspective of Jesus. We do not have the IV of Jesus because faith is nothing but the perspective of Jesus. Rabindranath Tagore is considered to be one of the greatest poets of India. When he was young, he had a problem with his eyes. He was short sighted. He could see things, but not very clearly. And he thought everybody saw the way he saw, that is not clearly, not distinctly. But one day, while he was playing with one of his friends, he happened to pick up the eyeglasses of his friend and put them on. All of a sudden, he could see everything very clearly and distinctly. And he ran all over the place telling everybody, I, could, I can see, I can see. Recalling this incident later in his life, Tagore wrote that as normal human beings, we do not see things clearly and distinctly. Only when we begin to look at things with the eyes of God, only when we begin to look at things with the eyeglasses of God, only then we see things clearly and distinctly. And he calls God's eyeglasses faith. What that means is, when we begin to look at things in our daily lives, the way God looks at things, then we will have strong faith. Now the question is, is there anything that we can do to attain the perspective of God, to attain the IV of God? Well, there are a few things that we can do to gain the perspective of God. Number one, walk with God, keep God's company. If we are able to walk with God and keep God's company, definitely we will get God's perspective. In the book of Genesis, in chapter 6, we read the story of Enoch. In the book of Genesis, it says, after Methuselah was born to Enoch, Enoch walked with God for 300 years. He lived in total fellowship with God and then he was seen no more. He was taken by God. In the following chapter, chapter 6, we read the story of Noah and about him also it says, Noah walked with God. And we know from the Bible that Abraham, our father in faith, also walked with God almost all the time. In the case of the apostles of Jesus, they had the great privilege and honor to be with the Lord Jesus for a long time. They had the wonderful opportunity to walk with Jesus, to listen to him, and also to gain his perspective. Now, in our case, what we can do now is try to keep company with God. 
as our great saint Chavara Kuriakos Elias says, live in the love of Jesus, sit with him, walk with him, and also always talk with him. If we are able to follow this guideline of Saint Kriakos Elias Chawara, then we will be able to gain the perspective of God. So, number one, work with God, keep his company. Number two, trust in God, trust in Jesus. We believe in our Lord Jesus Christ. We know he is God Almighty. We know he can do anything and everything. But still, we have often very little trust in our Lord Jesus. Now, there is a story in the Indian mythology about an elephant. His name is Gajendra. Gajendra is considered to be the strongest animal on earth. One day, this strongest animal, Gajendra, went to a river to drink some water. While he was drinking water, a crocodile attacked him and began to drag him into the water. Immediately, Gajendra tried to resist the crocodile. But the more he resisted, the more he was dragged down into the water. And then he realized that it was impossible for him to save himself. So, he called upon the name of God and immediately God came to his rescue. Now, most of us, whenever we face problems in our lives, what we normally do is we depend on our strength. We try to handle the problems by ourselves and only at the last minute we turn to God we turn to Jesus. Now, if we learn to trust in Jesus all the time, if we are able to trust in Jesus whenever and wherever we need support and help, then automatically our faith will grow and our faith will never become shallow or weak. Now, number three, to grow in faith, we have to love God, we have to love Jesus and also we have to love our fellow human beings. Brothers Karamoso is a beautiful novel written by Dostoevsky, the great Russian novelist. In this beautiful novel, there is a character, an old woman. This character, this old woman has a real problem with her faith. She does not know whether there is a God and she is also not sure about afterlife. And so, she goes to a holy priest named Sosima and when she met Father Sosima, she poured her heart out to him. Father felt very sorry for her. The woman asked Father Sosima, Father, is there a way we can be sure about the existence of God? Is there a way we can believe in afterlife? Then Father Sosima said, there is no way we can prove any of these things, but we can be more sure of them. And this woman was curious to find out how we can become more sure of the existence of God how we can become more sure about afterlife. Then Father Sosima said, try to love, try to love God from your heart, try to love your fellow human beings from your heart. The more you love, the stronger your faith will become. The more you love, the more faith you will have in the existence of God and also in afterlife. Now, I think this makes real sense. When we love something or when we love a person, our love will automatically help us to grow in our faith in that person. Let me 
tell you an example or give you an example from the Gospels. Remember the story of the Canaanite woman. This Canaanite woman had a daughter who was sick, who was possessed by a demon. And she came to our Lord Jesus asking the Lord to heal her daughter. But Jesus did not pay any attention. Again this woman approached Jesus asking for help. Then the disciples of Jesus, the apostles, they intervened and they asked the Lord to help this woman. Then Jesus said, I have been sent only to save the Jews. When this woman heard the reply of Jesus, she again implored the Lord to help. Then Jesus said, it is not right to give the bread of the children and give to the dogs. It is not right to take the bread of the children and give to the dogs. And do you know what she said in response? She said, Lord, even the dogs eat the scrums that fall from the table of the master. When Jesus heard that reply, Jesus was really overwhelmed. And Jesus said, woman, you have great faith. Your wish will come to pass. Now, this woman had great faith in the Lord Jesus, primarily because of her love for the daughter. She wanted a healing for her daughter, for her daughter by all means. And that is why she put her total trust in the Lord Jesus. So what this means is, when we have strong love, we will also have strong faith. Number four, to grow in our faith, we need to read the word of God on a regular basis. As we know, the word of God is very powerful. The word of God is always very alive. It is very active. If we are able to read the word of God on a regular basis, then automatically our faith will grow. Okay. Number five, to grow in our faith life, to get the perspective of God, we have to participate in the life of our faith community. Usually, the fullness of our faith is found in our faith community. So, when we become part of our faith community, automatically our faith will grow. Number six, to grow in faith, to get God's perspective, we have to share our faith with others. The gift of faith that we have received from the Lord, we need to share that faith with others. The moment we begin to share our faith with others, at that moment, we will really begin to grow in our faith. Remember the great command given by our Lord Jesus. Go therefore make disciples of all nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teach them to obey what I have taught you. We are the recipients of this great command of the Lord Jesus. And when we share our faith with passion, when we preach the message of Jesus with passion, automatically we will become strengthened in our faith. We will have deep and strong faith. Number seven, to grow in our faith, to get God's perspective, the most important thing is to pray. Remember, the apostles of the Lord Jesus were with the Lord for three years. Even though they were together for three years, still they had problems in their faith. And you know what they did? They asked the Lord to give them help so that they may grow in their faith. And this is also what we should be doing. Pray every day so that we will grow in our faith. And we need to have strong faith 
Because without strong faith, we cannot please God. And our Lord Jesus always expects strong faith from us. Remember, when two blind people approached him, asking for a healing, the first thing he asked them was, do you believe I can do this for you? And when they expressed their faith and confidence in the Lord, the Lord immediately healed them. So the Lord is always expecting strong and deep faith from all his followers. And he is willing to help us to grow in our faith. He not only expects strong faith from us, he admires and appreciates deep faith, strong faith. Remember the story of the centurion. He came to ask help for his sick servant. And the Lord was willing to go to his home and heal him. But the centurion said, Lord, please don't come. I am not worthy to receive you at my home. But if you say a word, my servant will be healed. And then Jesus said, I have never seen such kind of faith in all of Israel. Jesus was really happy. And this is what happens when we have strong and deep faith in our Lord Jesus. The Lord expects strong faith from each one of us. So let us try every day to grow closer to our Lord Jesus. And when we grow closer to him, when we pray to him for this gift of faith, we will definitely, automatically, will acquire strong faith. May God bless you all. Thank you.